All right, we are here at Data and Analytics Gartner Summit, and look who I have with me, Vishal Singh. Uh, finally, good to meet you in person. Likewise. And welcome to the Ravid Show. I'm super excited to learn more about data products because you've been talking a lot around that, and uh, it's been a while that I've, you know, been learning in depth about data products uh, from Vishal. Uh, so, Vishal, first of all, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us more about your role at uh, Starburst? Absolutely. First of all, thank you for having me on the show, Ravit. I mean, it's always a pleasure to be on your show um, and learn about the insights from what you're hearing from different prospects and the customers. Um, I, I'm, I'm the, one of the product lead and product managers uh, leading the data products and data governance at Starburst. Um, I've been here at Starburst for uh, almost four years. I'm very excited seeing the whole trend around how the data world has changed in the last four years. Right. And, and how the data products, even definitions, is changing or even evolving as people are talking about data products and now they're talking about Gen AI use cases. Exactly, this is, this is amazing. And uh, you know, since we are on this topic of data products, I'm gonna jump right into it. How do you see the, you know, the data products evolving? Yep. But at the same time, how do you see it uh, changing the way how the producers and data consumers are actually communicating? So one thing I like to say is that if you look, go back even like 10 years, 20 years, 30 years back, the problem statement has not changed. Exactly. Just the data volume has changed. True. So the one way that I think about data product, and, and this is the uh, fictional uh, thing, I, I wish there was one table. If there was one table, then everything will be, life will be simple because you exactly know what you're querying, where your data is. Now, if you look in the, in the today's DNA age, Data evolution is data is coming from all different sources. Your business right. depends on what kind of data you're collecting, what kind of data you're actually sharing, and how you're empowering your business. Right. The data products comes from exactly the same situation. Because when you collect data, you want to collect all the possible data in your system. But as an end consumer, if I give like, oh, this is all the hundred or one million tables, go find what the data is useful for you. But like, I do not know, I exactly. don't understand it. So how can we actually take the meaningful insight from mm. all the data sets, all the data from the different sources, and empower our end consumer to understand the data set so they can create the insight right. for the business use cases they're driving. And that is the meaningful definition of data product, which is quality driven, being used again and again by end consumers, being used for business use cases and which can be repeatable and end up using for driving the insight and business value for the organization. I love it. And do you, that also brings me to another question which is around, you know, I'm pretty sure you work with a lot of enterprise leaders as well. Yes. And like I said, you might be getting a lot of questions around, just tell us more about the basics of data production. When once they kind of listen to it and they're like, oh, this is how it's done. Yeah. But when you kind of get to the next, you know, stage two, how do you implement it in organization? Is it, because I'm pretty sure it's not that difficult as it looks like. Absolutely. Right? I think one thing which I have seen when people talk about data products, they exactly go into like tables, columns, rows. Right. But that is the where implementation of data products happen. The data products use case needs to come from business. For example, and I'm going to use an insurance example because I was actually in a talk. If somebody wants to reduce the number of claims or reduce the cycle to you know, improve the claims in the organization, they are looking into the data set of claim. The end consumer does not care. Is it Lake? Is it the warehouse? Is it what system? They say, do I get the data for the claims? So going back to the taking the one of the repeatable use case in the organization and seeing that where the data is and bringing that use case makes sense. Other piece you mentioned organization or a bigger enterprise, what they think that, okay, I have this like many different systems, how do I actually not make copies of the system and True. ensure that you have access to the right set of data sets? And that also become many copies. And now instead of creating one data product, I've created 100 data products yeah. because 100 people have different views. How can you even close, make minimum copies and taking exactly the same data product with more governance on the top of it, so you can have repeatable use cases yeah. with exactly the same data product. Okay, this is fantastic, and a uh, great example there, and thanks for sharing that. Also, that brings me to another question. A lot of people, and I'm pretty sure the audience is also wanting to know a little about 
what are these components that you uh, like exactly what is it that you need to make a viable data product? I, I, I'll go away. It starts with the business. One of the components has to be that quality approved data set. Yeah. And, and data products can be used, again, in, the, in one of the main business use cases, can be even used to even fine tune your LLM models and whatnot. Right. Anytime you are talking about the AI use case, a business use case, goes back to the trustworthy and quality data sets. True. If your data set is not trustworthy and there's a quality missing in the data sets, then no matter what insights you're driving, that will always be incorrect. So the first is like, is your data sets approved and quality controlled? Right. Second, is your data set going to be used for one use cases or is this for repeatable use cases? Right. If you are creating a data product, ask how many use cases do you have? The resources can be repeated again and again. And if there's a repeatable use cases, then you need a data product to actually give insights to more users in the organization. Right. And, and goes back into lowering the uh, cost of ownership, which means that let's not make copies of data, data sets again and again for different folks in the organization. Let's come with a governance plan of how you can take the exactly same data product or data set and have different personas viewing the data set for the data set or what they want to consume. So right. it all becomes like a three thing quality, governance, and the business use case. If you do not have a business mm. use case, then data products cannot exist. This is fantastic. Talking about, you know, about the journey as well, where do you see the first step is which when when do you think like organizations to, should take the first step to build a data product now? The, the the moment they actually have the customer's problems understanding what kind of business side they are driving. For example, I've seen a customer like I want to run some kind of notebook or whatnot to do a data science or ML workload. Now if you look at the, the cycle of the data analysts or data consumers, they're like who owns the data? How do they own the data? How the data is evolving. So the first thing like are your data scientists, data analysts struggling to even drive, build a notebook, ML application or Gen AI application, right. or even for normal action exposing to the business. If there is a block is there, or if they are actually spending days just to find where the data exists, you got a use case for data products. I love it. This is this is amazing. Good good examples there, Vishal. It's always such a pleasure chatting Likewise. with you about data products. You, you're a champion out there when it comes <laughs> to data so products. Much. Uh, quick one for our audience, I'm pretty sure they want to learn more. Uh, if they want to reach out to you, or I'm pretty sure there are a lot of resources that Starburst has as well, right? Absolutely. We can do that. I mean, one way I'll say, go back, to go to starburst.io. Uh, yep. There's a lot of actual resources exist. Uh, my LinkedIn is there, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. And my name is Vishal.Singh, so you can always email me, Vishal.Singh at Starburst. So reach out to me, reach out on Starburst.io. There are a lot of resources on Starburst.io. You can even download our application to learn more into what we do. Fantastic, that's easy. Thanks yes. for doing this once Thank again. You, it's okay. always a pleasure hosting Likewise. you on the Ravit Show. Thank you everyone for watching us today. Thank you.